Hello, I'm Kimilia and you're watching Kimi News. A past leader has highlighted Zahid's performance as AMNO president and called on him to step down if Pakatan Harapan and BN fails in the upcoming state elections. Past Information Chief Kairil Nizam Kirudin has called for Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zahid Hamidi to step down if Pakatan Harapan and BN fail in the upcoming state elections. His statement came after Zahid challenged Perikatan National Chairperson Muhyiddin Yassin to use the state polls as a platform to see the people's support. However, he did not define the meaning of fail. He said GE15 had proven that BN AMNO recorded the worst results in its political history because they only won 30 parliamentary seats. He added that AMNO only won 28 seats and this is the worst achievement by the AMNO president so far. Kyril also claimed that AMNO members are expected to shift their support to PN after the numerous issues surrounding the Harapan BN government and AMNO's alleged submission to DAP. According to Kyril, there is also dispute over the seat division between AMNO and DAP in a few states, to the point that many AMNO members are now determined to openly oppose the party. He said PAS is confident that the turmoil within Harapan BN, as well as the apparent weakness of Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim's administration, will lead to them being punished by the people in the state elections. Lawyer Muhammad Hanif Katri Abdullah wants the government to expedite amendments of laws on the use of the word Allah so that there won't be any problems for authorities to carry out their duties. This came following Anwar's explanation on the issue yesterday. Lawyer Muhammad Hanif Katri Abdullah said the government only needs 24 hours to amend laws to ensure the word Allah can only be used by Muslims in Peninsular Malaysia with restrictions for non-Muslims in Sabah and Sarawak. He said this in response to Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim's announcement on the matter during the Dewan Rakyat session yesterday. Hanif said the government cannot afford to delay it as the federal and state authorities are hindered from carrying out their duties over the Allah usage and it was only right for the government to get it done within 24 hours. He said the government should not have withdrawn its appeal at the Court of Appeal on the Jill Ireland case as the court process then could have gone all the way up to the federal court. He questioned how enforcement authorities as well as state religious councils are supposed to carry out their responsibilities without the appeal and without the enactment of new laws. The lawyer added that the expediting of the amendments is critical as 10 states in Peninsular Malaysia alone have enactments that forbid the dissemination of non-Islamic faiths to Muslims. Yesterday, Anwar had said that the amendment and revocation of laws that are in conflict with a ruler's council's decision over the word Allah was part of his administration's efforts to ensure that the issue may no longer be contested in the courts after the 2021 landmark decision in the Ireland case. Ahmad Maslan has expressed regret over comments that branded him as an infidel after he urged UMNO members to support the DAP, their former rivals, which is now part of the unity government. AMNO Supreme Council member Ahmad Maslan said there was nothing unusual with his call for AMNO members to support candidates from DAP contesting in the upcoming six state elections. Speaking to reporters in Parliament, he elaborated that what he previously said was to support not in the name of DAP but for the unity government. Ahmad also expressed regret over comments that branded him as an infidel over the matter. He said he felt saddened by the personal attacks that followed his statement. This came after several unidentified individuals had posted an image of Ahmad on Facebook, edited to change his face to that of a pig and with the word kafir over it. Ahmad said several police reports have since been lodged on the matter, including by Amno Youth, although he said he did not instruct them to do so. He also thanked those who had lodged police reports against the Facebook accounts. He added that this is not a personal issue, but a matter of principle where they cannot label others as an infidel. Ahmad also reminded his critics that both Bersatu and PAS, which are now allies in PN, had previously partnered with the DAP as part of Pakatan Harapan. 
He said AMNO as their then political rivals never branded their presidents, Muhyiddin and Abdul Hadi Awang, as infidels. Former AMNO leader Kairi Jamaluddin has been advised to not delay his decision on whether to accept Muhyiddin Yassin's offer for him to join Bersatu and take up a Supreme Council position. The advice was given by Bersatu Deputy President Ahmad Faisal Azumu, who said that time waits for no man. In an interview with FMT, Faisal said they knew it wasn't an easy decision for him to make and respects his right to take time in making the decision. However, he said he truly believed that Kairi knew that Perikatan National was the way forward. On Monday, Kairi had said that he needed more time to consider offers he has received to join political parties. Kairi said he did not want to rush into a decision just because the six state elections are around the corner. Muda has raised concern over the government's decision to raid 11 swatch stores nationwide and called on Home Minister Saifuddin Nasution Ismail to explain their stand on the matter. Muda has called on the government to explain their stand on the swatch store raid last week. Its Deputy President Amira Aisha Abdul Aziz raised concern about the ambiguity of what was considered harmful. In a post on Twitter, Amira questioned if the government was going to start raiding all shops that sell anything with rainbow or pride colors painted on it, including the small businesses. She added that they were sending a message that it's not safe for brands and companies to operate in Malaysia. With this, she said Home Minister Saifuddin Nasution Ismail has to explain the government's stand on the matter and where they drew the line. Amira also attached a picture of a notice purportedly served by the Home Ministry to a swatch store, stating that the 22 watches have been confiscated because they carried LGBT symbols and violated the Printing Presses and Publications Act of 1984. She raised concern that the law was open to abuse, citing Section 7, Bracket 1 of the Act. This section gives the Home Minister absolute discretion to prohibit the production, sale, circulation, distribution or possession of any media that is likely to be prejudicial to public order or alarm public opinion. Amira added that they should make it clear to companies and business owners on what can be sold and what cannot be sold in Malaysia. She said if it is the government's position that all pride products should be banned in Malaysia, they should table it in the Dewan Rakyat and debate it accordingly. It shouldn't be at the whims and fancy of whoever is the minister of the day, she said. Last week, 11 swatch stores nationwide were raided by the Home Ministry for displaying its pride collection, which comprises watches in various shades of rainbow, adopted as a symbol of the LGBT community. Warisan President Shafi Abdal has named his deputy, Daryl Laking, as his successor in Warisan. Warisan President Muhammad Shafi Abdal has named Daryl Laking as his successor in the party. Shafi said if anything happens to him, then Daryl will take over. According to the Borneo Post, Shafi said this during the Sabah Legislative Assembly session yesterday. Daryl Laking is the deputy and co-founder of Warisan. Both Shafi and Laking retained their party positions unopposed last year. Meanwhile, Shafi, who is the opposition leader, also urged the state government to table laws to prevent lawmakers from defecting. He said that without such laws, defections will cause political instability. Yesterday, Sabah State Assembly Speaker Kazim M. Yahya promised that adequate time would be given for the debate on the anti-hopping bill. The bill is listed as the last agenda on its order paper for the ongoing Legislative Assembly sitting. Sabah, along with Johor, Malacca, Pahang and Terengganu, does not have laws that will vacate a state assembly seat should the incumbent defect to another party. UMNO Supreme Council member Ahmad Maslan said the upcoming six state elections are expected to be held simultaneously even though the dissolution of the respective legislative assemblies may vary. Ahmad said he is made to understand that several state legislative assemblies will be dissolved automatically this June based on the five-year period as stipulated in the constitution. He added that aside from the polling date, nomination day is also expected to be set on the same date. 
However, he told reporters that they would need to confirm this with the Election Commission. The six states due to hold elections this year are Penang, Selangor, Negeri Sembilan, Kedah, Terengganu, and Kelantan. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.